Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Uh, the boys are back, baby. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm with Paul of Fame. That's right. This is episode 238 of the JB and Benny Blue Review. Yeah. Good, sir. How you doing? I know you're happy because the BG boys got that dub. You heard me on the West Coast. Growing up the W. It, it's always sweet to win in LA, right? Oh. Uh, especially against some punk ass banana goats, you know what I'm saying? As, uh, as my brother calls them out there. Uh, it, it, it's always good to be the banana goats. It's always that, that just so much sweeter, especially if they change the uniform and all this stuff. Like, they're not the old Rams anymore with the, with the gold. With the gold. You know and saying, blue, the nice yeah, dark yeah. blue, you know what I'm saying? The white. You know what I'm saying? Like, respectable. Not a banana yes. goat, all right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Anyway, yes. uh, yeah. So shout out to the BG man. Great job getting the job done. Cole McCoy jumping in that thing and being the veteran quarterback he is, timing routes. You know, what I'm saying getting the ball out of his hands yeah. all the time. You gonna talk uh, about it? You know, just good stuff like that, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this is the episode what two thirty six? Two. Come on, two thirty eight, baby. Uh, and real quick, oh, do, do, do a quick do a quick mic check. Mic check one two. Okay, but in the mic meantime, check one two one two. Let's uh, well, yeah. Well, JB, well, JB switches to his buttery vocals. Follow us at JB and Benny Blue. You can see us now and listen. If you're watching on Instagram, please drop in a comment because now we're streaming this from our YouTube, so you can actually watch it full screen. It looks all pretty on our Instagram live. So please tap in and listen. You can see us now a little bit earlier because of the old desert time change. That's right, six thirty Pacific. 7.30 AZ time. Well, it's not our time change, you know what I'm saying? We don't change our time. Everybody else. Well, oh, guess what? Something changed, goddammit. We're a little bit earlier. Now, now you're chiming in all velvety, you know what I'm saying? So there it is. If you want to see more of JB's opinions and content, you know he stays in the gym. Follow him at 73KingJB73. Follow yours truly at Benny Blue Eyes. Of course, we're on TikTok at JB and Benny Blue for exclusive content. If you're tapping in from the desert, you can always run this back, audio or video, casualsports.com. That's KSRN Arizona, live streaming radio out of Phoenix. And if you still want the podcast, one hot dollar, that's right, patreon.com forward slash JB and Benny Blue for audio and for exclusive content. BG, you got the dub. You're only one win away from second place in the NFC West. Get your Bird Gang All Day shirt, unisex made to order, and get 10% off while you're at it. Use code BG at checkout. And of course, any sponsorship interviews, new music, or hate mail, please write us to JB and Benny Blue Review at gmail.com. And of course, we got to tap in with our guys, man, Valley Boys Association clothing. Go to valleyboyassociation.com, get that fall winter wardrobe. Right hey, Zach and Cody, I know y'all watching. I need a hoodie. You know what I'm saying? We, right, we need a hoodie. Exactly. It's hoodie season. Right, you know, you, you know, I stay repping. You know what I'm saying? You know, I stay in the valley holding it down. Next. I be getting looks. People, I, I was on a plane back from New Orleans. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And like this girl stopped me. She was like, "Oh, you know, you know, the Valley Boys." Ooh, I said, yeah. "Yeah, what you mean? We out here." You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, I need that hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Preferably a great one. You know what I'm saying? With the good, you yes. know, the good, the good Valley Boys. You know, VBA clothing. You know, you know what I mean? You know how we do it. I love it. So yeah, listen, man, tap, tap in with our boys and get get right for the winter. Get you a new hoodie, new gear podcast, 22 for 20 percent off your order. And oh, Dr. Bridges, your boy is fresh off the trip to Iowa, being the best man to one of my best friends in the world. Congratulations to our guy, Dr. Tim Tinkle, aka Mr. It's Tim to Got hitched this weekend. I was in attendance. Cheers, sir. My lovely girlfriend and plenty of pictures and video to come so Jamie can see that. So help him pay for this goddamn wedding by getting your new or pre-owned vehicle. It's a hefty price tag, you know what I'm saying? Text review to 515-444-7003 or DM him at It's Tim to buy on Instagram and get into the car of your dreams wherever you are at in the nation. Coming up, week 10 week recap, a lot of wild things. The Eagles, JEB's drafting team, finally took an L and they... A uh, sort of a wild game. We're going to get to that. The Cars got the dub. The Lions got a dub two in a row, baby. And a whole lot of mo going down. Um, but, Dr. Bridges, how, how are you How are you feeling, sir? Talk to the people. I feel great. I feel great, man. Uh, uh, you know, everything's beautiful. Really, though. That's all I can say, man. Everything is beautiful right now. Uh, fam healthy. I'm healthy. You know what I'm saying? My brother's healthy. You know what I'm saying? I always do the wrong way. You know, hey, can't get no better than that, man. You know what I'm saying? I tell... And I joke with people all the time, not joking, but being dead serious, like we are so blessed. We have no idea 
like how blessed we are. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna keep living life to the fullest, keep loving life, you know what I'm saying? Keep blessing those, you know what I'm saying, that need to be blessed, keep blessing y'all with this fine content on this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Episode 238, we out here. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. Right. Well, reviewers, listen, you know what it is. Wherever you're watching Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, if you are feeling blessed and highly favored and you want to talk to the talk to the boys, drop a comment or question at any point and we will get to it. I promise you that. But man, we got to get into some recap. And of course, you know that we are going to be talking about the BG here to start. So pulling it up, Dr. Bridges. As you said, them cards came out here to the West Coast and they dropped the banana goes 27 to 17. And the battle of the backup QBs was Colt McCoy mm. versus old Wofford. McCoy goes 26 for 37 for 238 yards and a TD. Now, JB, you know Kyler's dealing with the hamstring injury. I know Colt was dealing with a knee problem. Do you feel like the BG should maybe stay with Colt for another game or two to get everything stabilized because they're trying to approach 500 and try to slide back to the top of the NFC West? I would definitely keep Colt in the, in the starting lineup. Um, let, let, hamstrings are tricky, right? And uh, we don't want the young boy to get hurt, hurt, right? So Colt's knee, you know what I'm saying? He's a smart quarterback. He's not going to do anything to injure himself. Uh, and he knows how to. He's just, he's just, he's just, he's battle tested. So he knows how to take falls. He knows that, you know what I'm saying? He's not going to try to make no crazy plays. If he's getting sacks, he's going to go down, you know, to save himself, make sure he's straight. Uh, but outside of that, you know what I'm saying? He, he just runs the offense, offense systematic. Uh, even when Cliff calls a shitty play, you know what I'm saying? I think that, <laughs> uh, on, to be honest, I think that Cliff calls the offense different for Colt because he thinks that. I agree. You know, he, he thinks that Colt can't do the things that, that Kyler can do, right? So he calls it different. He calls it more systematic. And, you know what I'm saying? So he can just one, two, three, bam, read, one, two, three, read, one, read, two, get the ball out. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three, run, 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 run. We didn't see a lot of behind the the, the, the line of scrimmage throws, you know what I'm saying? Those those screens and so on and so forth. The heap crap he tried to throw at Kyler all the time. He just called a different offense, right? So uh, and I think that if he continues with this trend when Kyler gets back, then we'll be fine. All I've ever been screaming is for Cliff to call better plays, right? right. Uh, he don't have, he don't have, he don't necessarily need to be the leader of a team. Uh, we have leaders. We got JJ Watt, you know what I'm saying? We got AJ Green. We got guys that are older and are vets, you know what I'm saying? Beach them, you know what I'm saying? Like cats like this that have played a lot of football, Rodney Hudson, you know what I'm saying? People that can, that can lead a team. We don't need him to be our head. We need him to call good plays on Sundays, right? Uh, and if we do that, and we're, we're again, I say it, and I'll continue to say it, we're one of the, if not the most talented football team in the NFL, right? As far as player for player, position for position, we are that talented. We should win games. Like, I, hey, I, I'm gonna go back and say it again. Actually, we should be whatever and one because there's really only one game that we should have truly lost, and that was Kansas City because they just kicked our ass, right? So, and no bigs. So, I mean, if we keep the trend going, I feel like the next couple of weeks we should, you know, keep coding the lineup. Uh, we we had a few key guys that were out, uh, Kyler being one of them. But uh, those th these are just one week things. But Kyler's hamstring is picky because he, he is fast. You know, what I'm saying he's very explosive. It's very easy to keep that thing and very easy to re-injure and, and make it even more serious. So yeah, right. keep keep him out a couple games. Let him rest up. Yeah, and, and watching the highlights, one thing I noticed is that the the you talk you, you talk about you talk about automatic systematic. It felt like with Colt things were a little bit more calm and balanced. You saw Conrick make some hay, get in the end zone. Rondell Moore was making some plays. Mm. It was nice to see JJ finally get a sack. It just seemed like the BG in all three phases was a lot more calm and balanced. So I get it. They're you know they're going against you know back up there and you know the Rams are trending as most Super Bowl teams do JB where they they get to they get to the big one the the one year and the next year they they don't even make the playoffs so they're right. trending that way for sure but it seemed like Colt wasn't put in a position to be a hero it no. just he's making good good reads i mean but, hot but again, some plays right, it was great but again systematic right he, he's calling the offense to fit Colt's skill set right and right. why not why not do the same thing for Kyler like Kyler ain't got to be our superhero we just have the luxury of having a quarterback that can get out of trouble with his legs whenever he wants to. But he has a right. stronger arm than Colt, right? I don't think the vision, you know, the vantage point, you know what I'm saying, is that big of a disadvantage for Kyler. It's just run the same damn offense that you're running with Colt, with Kyler, right? Like, mm -hmm. make him comfortable. Like, we're getting the plays in with 15 seconds left on the play clock. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of these little bitty things that make a quarterback comfortable, this is why the comfort level was there, right? Even when we got, you know, down to him at one point, like, there was still no, no panic, right? We just came back out, could drive, scored, continued to play ball, very steady, and then eventually, you know, challenge prevailed and we won the game, right? So, yeah, we keep that trend. We'll be okay.
Yeah, by the way, not for nothing, it, it was nice to see Colt, you know, get on his wheels a little bit. He ran for a couple of firsts. Oh, and made of some course, without doubt. The pocket broke down. He's not, he's not immobile, right? He can get out and go. You know what I'm saying? And that's all we've ever asked for a quarterback. That's all you want a quarterback to do, right? Tom Brady will get his ass out and run for five yards, right? You know, right. the, the, music the slowest five as, yards as, as, so, as soon as he takes out the pocket, <laughs> doom, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like the music comes on, but <laughs> everything and, and, is slow motion. right, you know what I'm saying? And everything goes in slow motion, but he gets that little first down, he right. gets up and does his little dance and first down, and that's that, right? So that's all we ever ask, right? We don't need a superhero again. We just happen to have a super talented quarterback behind center. Uh, so yeah, so note to Cliff, just keep calling plays like that, and I think we'll be okay. Well, listen, the BG are hosting uh, the Ooh, Niner Gang this week on Monday Night Football. And this is a big one because Niners are 5-4, and four, <clears throat> BG's 5-6. and six. So the BG win, you know, they're, they're likely going to take that number two spot in the division and move even closer to the wild card. So this is a big one for them. So we're going to see what they're going to do as far as, you know, either Colt or Kyler. But I agree. I feel like for one more game, I feel like they should get they should leave it in Colt's hands. You know, slang that Colt 45. You know what I'm saying? That's a right. Pow, pow, pow. So there it is. We're going to talk more about that game here when we get to our Savage picks. But let's get more to the kiddies. Oh, the kiddies. Dr. Bridges put up 21 in the fourth quarter to beat the Bears 31 to 30. But hey, Fields is getting Fields is getting his. He even broke one for 67 yards. And, you know, mm. hey, Fields, Fields is doing what Fields does. And like right. you kind of to the point you made about Kyler, you feel like their Eberflus is really tailoring kind of the play calling to field strength. So do right. you feel like that's kind of what you're, you're starting to see manifest with the bears and on the kitty side, that's two in a row. I mean, they mm -hmm. got the giants, but it ain't that far fetched to think that they can beat the giants too. I mean, do so they, I, do they have I, a run of them too? I'll start with the kitties, man. I've been saying this all the time. I, 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 I still believe in your guy, right? Camel. I still you believe do. in him, right? I still believe in him, right? The attitude of the team. I think some bad, some things just went bad. Like in these games, shot of losses, just, just bad things here. A little Nick, little bad thing here and there. These are the things that keep you guys from winning ball games, but I feel like you guys are putting it together. Right? I think that firing y'all's defensive back coach was big, right? Because for whatever reason, he wasn't preparing the guys to be successful. I mean, you guys had some key turnovers in the defensive backfield in the last couple wins y'all had, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, uh, you guys are tailor made to win games, right? Uh, hard nosed attitude, you know what I'm saying? Gritty, nasty, you know, blue collar fucking football. Uh, it'll win. It'll win a lot of games. So, um, I, you know, I think you guys can take the Giants, no problem. I'll probably end up picking you guys to win uh, over the Giants. Uh, as far as the Bears go, yeah, you see that it's a young quarterback, young coach, right? So, we got to figure out what our guy can do, strengths and weaknesses, and we know it. But it's just more so about game flow, right? What 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 does he like to do? What makes him comfortable? Like what things you know what I'm saying that he do well? What things does he not do well? What defenses that he see that he doesn't really understand right now? Like he has growth and there's the maturation process is going to happen with Justin Fields but you, we can't expect these kids to do everything right now so we got to make the game a little bit lighter on right so I think that's what you're seeing with the Bears right now I mean scoring 30 points I mean hell I ain't did that shit you know <laughs> shit forever right, right? so right. it's like you're seeing these things growth you're seeing growth on both sides with the Bears the young coach and the young quarterback uh, and again and, and learning what we can and can't do Right, so this is good. I mean, you know, later you know, you know how it goes. Later in the season, you know what I'm saying, when teams start to figure out who the hell they are, you know what I'm saying, mid-November, early December, that's when this shit gets real, right? That's when this shit gets real. So just like the damn Green Bay Packers, like what I say, right? Eventually, these oh, young kids are going to start making plays, right? And there it is. Yep, Bears Bears heading to the uh, to the big ATL shouty uh, this week, so that's definitely a game that they could win. Particularly, you know, Fields, you know, being a Georgia boy, that's a homecoming. You know, he's going to show out. Mm -hmm. And then, meanwhile, like I said, the Kitties are there in old MetLife uh, against the Giants, who are four and one at home. Not for nothing, but at the end of the day, you know, if they you know they bring it to a time time possession game and they get they fire on offense like they have been, you know, getting Amon Ross St. Brown involved, Swifty mm -hmm. finding the end zone again. You know, it's definitely a it's it's a it's a winnable game. Totally winnable. You know? Totally winnable. It's, it's a winnable game. Um, but yeah, the thing the thing with Fields is like, and I was thinking about this earlier today. You almost kind of saw it with Lamar, right? Where it's like if you live by the scramble, you die by the scramble. Mm. So I feel like they kind of had limitations a couple years ago. Whereas now, you know, Lamar's really making great reads and airing it out. And I think if Fields adds that element to his game, where he's really really making big plays with right. his arm. He's going to be a problem. 
he's going to be the problem for yeah, everybody. He's a problem on his feet he, yeah, already. He, he's a big kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's, you know, he he's big. Like what, six two, six three? Weighs like two hundred thirty five pounds, mm -hmm. right? Two twenty five at the least. Like he's a big kid. You know, he can run. He's strong. You know what I'm saying? He's athletic. He's got a big arm. All right. But again, if you talk about Lamar growth process, right? Growth process. The growth process. He came in the league. We knew he could run. We knew he could throw the ball far. Right, but can you make the right reads? Can you make the tight throws? You know what I'm saying? Can you make the smart decisions when you're on the move with the ball? Right? Because yeah. that's when Lamar makes a lot of his mistakes as well. On the move, trying to throw across his body where he used to. Now on the move, throwing it, not quite throwing it, trying to decide whether he wants to run a pass. Right. right? So you can again this kid's gonna grow. I said it, right? When this kid got drafted, I said I got high hopes for Justin Field. Right? He he has a, a skill set. And I didn't see in some of these other quarterbacks that came out of Ohio State, right, that everybody was yep. praising, right? Yep. He just had a different skill set, right? So, and of course, you know what I'm saying, we, we know why. I mean, he came from Georgia. He went to Auburn, you know what I'm saying, or he went to Georgia, you know, out of, out of high school. So, this right. kid's SEC quarterback. He's not a Big Ten quarterback, you know what I'm right. saying? So, right, transfer portal yeah. to Ohio State. So, yeah, right. it's like he was pure Ohio State. But, yeah, I mean, like you said, you just – you you could you could, you could could see the intangibles, as they say. And they're, and they're, like you said, you finally got to the season. You, you mentioned Rodgers getting the mesh with the actual young receivers. Now we're getting to that point in the season where it happens, and we're definitely going to talk about the Packers because they are playing Mitchell's Titans, as you know, Dr. Bridges. Titan up, uh, Titans. All right, JB, as you see on the screen, and for those who follow us on on on, so, on social media, I had to post this. JB called it. He put it in our chat. And what did you know? It the Colts slid past the Ra uh, Raiders, the <laughs> Vegas, <laughs> and more like the, the Raiders, uh, right? yeah, the, the Hairball Raiders, right. twenty-five to twenty with old interim controversial interim head coach Jeff Saturday, and he puts right. Matt Ryan back in, who goes twenty-one for twenty-eight, two hundred twenty-two yards, and one TD. Hey man, are we are we looking at are we looking at a wild card run with them? I mean, what, what's the deal? You talking about culture, new life, right? New life, new life. New life. Now, I, I don't agree with the hire. I don't agree with it one bit, right? Uh, there are a lot more qualified coaches out there. That if they want to grab somebody out the street, they could have did it, right? I, I this was a setup all the way. I believe this is just a way because Saturday wanted to get into coaching. It's something he wanted to do, obviously, and this is his way in. Ursay helped him out. Is what it is. He got in. It's over now, right? He's there, right? So putting Matty Ice back in the game, but if you think about it, again, we just talked about simplifying the offense, right? Not having him throw the ball down the field 20 times, right? Getting somebody in front of his face at all times. Leaning on the run, focusing on the run, staying with the run, even when it's not yeah. super productive, right? John Taylor making hay again. Yes, finally. sir. You give him enough carries, this son of a bitch is going to goddamn eventually pop one, and he did, right? So You got you to, you got know, after you say that, that's so bad. Right, so I'm bit, ding, it, listen, <laughs> he's a natural runner, you know, that makes life easy on the offensive line. It makes life difficult on the defensive line, right? Now they have to worry about more than one thing, right? So, come on, man, like, head coaching is not the most difficult thing in the world, right? So when Saturday got hired, it's more so about – there's only two types of head coaches. There's that super technical head coach and there's that motivator, right? Mm -hmm. If you got somebody that can motivate you to win games, you know we know he knows what he's talking about. Man, his football IQ is super high. He played center in the NFL for a long time, Super Bowl champ, all that stuff, right? We know his football IQ is super high, right? What about his coaching IQ? What about his coaching skill? Well, his football IQ being high is going to help him be a head coach because in time decision-making time, right, he's going to be able to make those decisions because he has had a chance to be on the outside looking in as a commentator, right? And as a skept as, as, as a, a fan of football outside of just being a great player. So, I mean, you know, I've always liked Saturday, so I ain't got no beef with him. Uh, I just think that there's, you know, way more people out there qualified to do this. Now we don't know if Saturday is going to be the coach going forward. Right. But right now he's the interim head coach and they beat the Raiders and it is what it is. Shame on you Raiders. Right. But yeah, you know, all right. Well, hey, you know they got a double. Listen, JB, they got they got tough sledding. They got the Eagles coming in town, who are undefeated on the road, of course. So they just took their their first L, and yeah. you know that's going to be tough sledding for Eagles. They're team not, they're not going to be happy it, about it, too. <laughs> so, oh yeah, they yeah. they know they let one slip to the Commanders, which may mm -hmm. kind of make sense with the Commanders and kind of going. We'll get to that in a second. But JB, the only game I was actually able to watch was this one: the Vikings stunned the Bills, thirty-three to thirty, and oh, mafia, mafia, you, and, uh, mafia. Is it time? Is it is it time to consider the skull the serious contenders? They find a ways to win. No, no, I still think they're gonna fall off, Benny. I really do. Uh, they're, they're fun to watch right now. They're having fun. They're 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 
they're you know yeah, we got Kirk Cousins on the on the, on the plane wearing chains, you know what I'm saying, doing Ask the sugar Kirk. daddy, you know what I'm saying? Like we got, you know, so they're having fun and it's fun to watch, right? And and I think that they'll continue to have a little success because their coach isn't afraid to let these kids and these these men, I should say, play ball and have fun playing ball. So but excuse me, uh Vikings on bike, right? Uh, I think eventually they're gonna fall back off again. That team over in Green Bay is brewing, right? It's brewing right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know, and I ain't talking about Milwaukee's best, right? It's brewing right now. It, it's, it's some shit going on over there in Green Bay right now. And you're going to keep your eye on them. I think they, they play one more time, right? Uh, with the uh, the Packers and the Vikings, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, pulling up the uh, Packers schedule here. So this week, of course, they're playing Thursday night football against Mitch's Titans. And then, yeah, they play, they play, uh, the Vikings at home on New Year's Day, and then and then they end the season with the Kitties. The the Packers do. So they got right. one more coming up. So uh, we we know that the, we one know more. that we know that the Vikings are going to the playoffs from where they are right now, right? I think they're the number well they're, they're not the number two seed in the, in the NFC because Eagles are number one, right? right. Um, exactly. So this means that they have to play the first round, right? So who are they going to face in the first round? Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, if, yeah, and, yeah. If, and, if, and if we play them again, oh, we gonna whoop that ass, right? Oh, we oh we gonna whoop that ass. We gonna we gonna show the real Kirk Cousins, right? Because we are gonna pick him off two or three Mister times, you like that, right? Mister, you like that, and we are gonna have some fake chains on the sideline, and we are gonna be doing the sugar daddy too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, listen, I, are they real right now? Are they contenders? Hell yeah, they're legit, right? But are they are Vikings gonna fight? Yes, they are. Right, and mark my words right here on what is it, September the sixth, November the sixteenth, right, two thousand twenty-two. The Vikings will not go to the Super Bowl. They will not win the Super Bowl. They will lose in the first round of playoffs. Trust me when I say. All right, so serious, but you ain't gotta worry about them. It's gonna be a dream season up until the point where they wake up. <laughs> Put like that. Yeah, yeah. Normal. Normally, I tend to agree, but they are finding ways to win, and you know they're they're getting more out of old old Kevin O'Connell on the offense than they were with old Mike Zimmer. Of course. Um, so I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Like you said, how that holds up. Now, speaking the the point you kind of made just there is my concern. I think going forward for the Eagles, where it's very much a dream season, but they're. The, the battle testing isn't there for the playoff. So they take the L to, to who they play. You know, the commanders play for the second time. So go figure. It's a team that's already played them. That's going to mm-hmm. have the tape to get it done. They played some pretty you know, balanced ball, took advantage of some fumbles and some turnovers. Right. JB, the Eagles finally taking their first L of the season. No big deal or a sign of trouble to come. No big deal. Um, they made more mistakes you could possibly make in a game. Right. If they don't find out got their ass kicked, then we'd be like, hold up now. Right, you know what I'm saying? You can scratch your head a little bit, right? But no, they made more mistakes than you can. Any mistake you can make in a game, they probably made it, right? So you're going to lose those games more than you win them. Like nine times out of ten, you're going to lose those games. You're not going to win them, right? So it held true last night or whatever night they played. Was it last night? Was it, it, was, it was what night? Monday night? Monday night, right? So a couple nights ago, it held true. Uh, but they needed that, though, right? It's hard to continue to learn from wins, Benny. Right, Next. it's hard to learn from wins. Right, when you won, you just kind of start to overlook shit. Not saying they got problems at all, right? Because they're a pretty sound football team, right? Right now, but when you lose, we start to fine tooth comb everything. We, everything goes under the microscope, right? So I can guarantee you, what's his name, Stefanski, right? Because he's a bit of an uh, asshole. Siri- Siriani. Siriani, right? So yeah. he's a bit of an asshole. You know what I'm saying? So he's not going to punish his boys, but I guarantee you that they're going to come back out and they're going to punish the next opponent, right? And they're going to give back the plan. You can football. They signed uh, Lindell Joseph, which was a great defensive line signing, I right? Yep. You're, talking about, you're talking about keeping them thick, you know what I'm saying? Put pause, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> In the middle, put pause, right? And, you know, with the absence of big baby, the biggest baby, um, the kid they got from Georgia, I can't remember his name for shit, but... He's Jordan out. Jordan Davis. Yeah, big Jordan Davis. So he's out. Yep. So uh, that's a yep. big, huge gap in the middle that you got to fill. For pause. So listen. Two for two. Goddamn. The Eagles, man. They're serious, right? They're yep. serious. But at the same time, hey, who knows? It's about who gets hot at the end of November. And the right time. Beginning of December. Yep. That's what it's about, right? Yep. All right, we'll see. I mean, like I said, they're, they're, they're going against a bless you, goddamn, going against the. Uh, see, he's already, he's already, he's already sneezing away the bad juju for the Eagles. Yes. We got uh, the Colts coming up, so they're going to bounce back. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about. There. So that's some. 
Take care, baby. Uh, some cool. Uh, below. Some bill again. Make sure to tap in with our guys, Valley Boys Association clothing. You know what I'm saying? Use the code podcast22 for 20% your off your order at checkout, and they will hook you up for the fall winter collection. Get your hoodies, get your sweatpants, your joggers, everything that you need. So again, Valley Boys Association.com. Use code podcast22 for 20% off your order at checkout. And again, our guy Tim Tinkle is a married man helping pay for that wedding by getting into a new or pre-owned vehicle. Text review to 515-444-7003. That's text review to 515-444-7003. Or DM him at It's Tim to Buy on Instagram or Facebook. And Tim will get you into the car of your dreams no matter where you are in the country, baby. And again, man. Please make sure to follow us. We, you know, we're putting up the content and you know, hitting you with the memes, the the highlights, the the segments, the the hot takes, if you will. But we know we don't do any hot takes; just real talk on this side. Follow us at JB and Benny Blue on all social media and subscribe to our YouTube for more content. The new live stream time. I know we you know we're catching up to people, so some people might not be seeing this live because we did bump it up for the time change. Again, six thirty Pacific now, seven thirty AZ times. So that's eight thirty Central and nine thirty there on the East Coast. And you already know, man, we are available casualsports.com. That's KSRN Arizona. Shout out to our brothers out there in the desert. We are live streaming out of Phoenix. So please make sure to tap in with them in case you miss the show. And again, if you want the podcast, just one hot dollar, patreon.com forward slash JB and Benny Blue. So make sure to get at us, man. Real quick, going to do a fantasy football check in NFL.com for the People League. Team Nando holds the best overall record, 9-1 and one there in the Bridges Division. But, oh, the Savage Duo is back in second in the Blue Division, right behind Limitless KB, who stands at 7-3. and three, And we are 6-4. and four. And when you hear that rack of a brewski, I think you know what that means. It's going to be for some Savage Picks. But before we do, we got to see how we've done after 10 weeks of foosball and with the drum roll, please, God damn it. JB is at 8265 and 1, but yours truly is at 9057 and 1. Let's go through them right now with the picks. Uh, we both picked the uh, Panthers who fell to the uh, Falcons. Both got the Bucks right there in Germany. I correctly picked the Vikings there in Brr Mafia. The uh, Lions got it done. We both picked the Titans, both picked the Chiefs, both picked the Dolphins, both picked the Giants, Steelers. JB correctly picked the Colts as we address, and the Packers. Both picked the BG, both picked the Niners, and unfortunately, both picked the Eagles. So that's what happened in Week 10. And God damn it, we're going to get to it right now with some motherfucking Week 11 Savage picks. Let's go, baby. And we are starting on Thursday Night Football. And just a real quick disclaimer, as you see on our ticker, uh, these lines move. I pulled these lines from yesterday, so these lines may be a little bit different than what you see on the screen. But right now, it's Mitch's Tighten Up Titans going up to the boom, 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 go, pack, go on Thursday night. And the line was three, and currently the line sits at uh, still at three uh, for the Packers at home, JB. What you the Packers got? are hot. The Packers are picking it up. The Packers are getting it on. I got the Packers winning it late. You know what? Probably a little bit to your surprise. I am going with the Packers as well. Sorry, Mitch. Mm. I feel like they're getting hot at the right time. They're playing at home, getting some health. Uh, Tannehill looks like he will be back, but I don't think it's going to be enough for the Packers who are starting to put it together. So I'm taking the Packers as well. All right. It's the Bears headed to the Doity Boyd Falcons, and the line is still three for the Falcons who are three and two at home. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to roll the Falcons at home. I feel like they won't make the mistakes they make on turf that they make on grass. You know, Mariota was making some real weird plays, slipping a little bit, so on and so forth. He can be really dangerous. So we're looking at two guys that can really get active with their legs. Excuse me, and they will, right? Uh, but I just believe that Mariota has more weapons playing at home. You know, Atlanta going to show up, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think the Bears are going to be able to take that crowd and deal with that. So. I know Justin Fields wants to show out at home, but I think that that energy is going to make him make a couple mistakes. I got Atlanta win. Yeah, Bears seem to be a little bit more banged up than the Falcons, but I actually like what the Bears are starting to do. 
uh, on offense. So I'm going the other way. I'm taking the uh, Bears in this one. All right. It's the... <laughs> the dog, them dogs limping to one to get and, Sean and, Watson and, back. And guess who's back? Guess who's Bizak? Hopefully Who he's been Bizak? on. Ho- hopefully he ain't been on his back. What you mean, Deshaun? Deshaun Watson back? We ain't back for this game. That that's coming up for the uh, for I'm, the I'm Texans. Just, I'm just talking about as far as like you know, he's back. He's allowed to be back in the practice facility. So right, you know. I'm saying like that they they might need him because after coming up coming against this one, it gets a yeah. And I would, I would, I would not take the nine and a half points, right? Josh Allen, it is now eight. It's now, on ESPN. It's now eight. Okay, I wouldn't take the eight points, right? Because yep. um, Josh Allen's in the slump, like baseball players when they shout on a rent, say word to big boy, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm out okay, Ooh, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm taking the Bills to win. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, again, I wouldn't take that eight points. I'd be dumb. Right? You know what I'm saying? I think they're gonna probably end up winning by five on some weird shit. Yeah, I mean, look, the, you know, the the Browns can be good for running the ball, making a couple plays on defense, but I uh, definitely wouldn't take the line as well. So uh, I'm taking uh, the Bills bounce back from a really tough loss at home to you know good the Vikings. Bounce back Bills is good enough. The bounce back Bills uh, I'm taking here as well. Uh, all right, it's the E A G L E S Eagles going against Chad Carr's Colts. Uh, line was nine, and the line is now dropped to seven in favor of the Eagles on the road. I got the Eagles. Again, like I said earlier, they've been to punish whoever they play against. So the Colts, y'all about to get that ass whooped. Sorry. Focus, main focus, shut yeah, the run down. You know, They're going to shut Taylor down, and then yeah. from there, they just going to go crazy. Yeah, I, I like I like the Eagles as well. It's always a nice story when you see a team going through hard times and having to bounce back. But if they if they had a weaker opponent... I would like it more for the Colts, but uh, I like the Eagles and probably like the line too, uh, but I'm taking the uh, Eagles as well. All right. AFC East matchup, JB. It's the E-E-E-J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets going to the Pats, dude. And the line is still three for the Pats at home. I got the Pats, man. You know what I'm saying? The Jets having a better season, giving the Jets fans a little something to cheer about. Uh, but, again, we're talking about the old man, all right? Talk about Belichick, right? They're going to be prepared to win, and they're going to win. Yeah, I'm taking the Pats as well, um, you know, on defense. Uh, you know, I think it's just one of those things where they do need to win because they're still in the thick of it to potentially get a wild card, or even, oddly enough, they're neither of these teams are that far out from actually the top of the division. Right, I was about to say, everybody, so, like, look. Belichick look, is good, is good really, to find a way. This thing is going to, this, this shit's going to be crazy, bro. In two weeks, it's gonna be like pandemonium in most of these divisions. You know what I'm saying? Because shit ain't sweet as it look right now. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Still, still in the mix. So I'm, I'm on this one. I'm taking the hats as well. All right, JB, it's some banana goats heading down to that big gumbo bowl, baby. And the Saints marching in at home, and the line is now moved up a little bit to three and a half for the Noya at home. Mm, when you're in the NOLA, you got to watch out for them spells. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch out for that spooky, spooky, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're rolling. So we rolling with the NOLA, right? All right. So he's taking the Saints. I think Stafford is back in this one. God damn it, David. The Saints are so effing inconsistent. The Rams yeah. need a dub. I'm against maybe slightly against my better judgment. I'm taking the Rams. Just kind of looking at the injury report here. Cooper Cup on short term IR. Eh, I think their offense is so little. That, that, that's crazy. that's their offense, right? That's their right. offense right there. Right. That's it's a wrap. It's over. That's right. their offense, right? He makes thirty five to forty percent of their plays every game for them to win. True, but the Saints are effed up as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna take the Rams. I might regret that one. All right, JB, it's my red hot. That's right. I said it. Red hot kitty is going against the G <laughs> men, and the line has moved down to three for the G men at home. Mm, I'm rolling with the kitties, baby. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, let's go, D Town. Yeah. Right? Let's go. You right, know what I'm saying? Go. Let's go. Say word to T Grizzly. You know what I'm saying? Hey, the boy is gonna get the <laughs> win, man. They go get the win. Uh, I, I, the Giants is playing good ball, spirited ball. Again, we talk about the coach that's the motivator, right? And then we got the coach that's, you know what I'm saying, the, the technical guy, right? This cast the motivator, right? He's going to motivate them to win. 
You know what I'm saying? And he's been doing that. He has a talented football team, right? But I just believe that Detroit's going to make more plays. When it's said and done, I think you guys will get another close one. To remain yeah, red hot. Yeah, I mean, right, three three in a row. Listen, they've already matched their win total for last year. So, you know, Kitty's banged up like all, like all teams are. I think uh, young Rodrigo may still be out, although Swifty's been back and Jamal Williams, you know, been playing well. Um, look, man, I mean, you know what Saquon Barkley can do. You know what Danny Dimes can do a little bit on his feet. Oddly enough, this game is hilarious, JB, because the Giants have Kenny Galladay, who wanted the kiddies to give him the big deal, and they were like, nah, we're straight, and now you're seeing why. Kenny Galladay is dropping passes left and right, and when he does get targeted, he's not making the most of it. He's trying to be one of those guys who's like wanted the big deal, and you're starting right. to see reasons why he didn't get it, and the G-men gave it to him. Right. So it's going to be an interesting game, man. If they can if they can really contain the pass and force it to be on the shoulders of Saquon, Maybe. You know what they can do on offense? This could be a jank, ugh, kind of. You know what the kiddies do, man. If jank they're, if they're, if they're stank, get that dub, you, jank and stank is going to go down like that, man. They're going to get that dub. That's how they're going to do it. So, LA, we're both taking the kiddies. I love it. All right. JB's former employers, the Keep Pounding Panthers, going against Wills. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Hmm. And the line was 11 and a half. It has now moved up to 13. For the Ravens at home, JB. Would not take the 13 points because we know the Ravens, the Ravens have a tendency to kind of trick it off once they get past the 40 uh, to where they got to depend on that boy. You know what I'm saying? The biggest, baddest leg in the NFL is Justin Tucker to get them three points. So I wouldn't take that line, but I'm going to definitely take Baltimore to win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the Panthers, you know, kind of able to steal one here and there, but I don't think they're going to do it against the Ravens who are getting the playoff mode. Uh, Baker Mayfield is starting, which that doesn't really matter, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. You know, got some banged up, you know, folks there for, for the Ravens. J.C. Horn and Mark Andrews were both limited in practice, but at the end of the day, got too much for them at home. Got to be more careful. And Dr. Got to be more work, careful, baby. Hey, we're, and so look, we're, we're both taking them. All right. It's a draped up and dripped out Tyler Heineke led Washington Commanders going to the H Town coming down. Mm. And the line was two and a half and has now moved up to three for the Commanders on the road. Mm. It's going down, baby. H Town, baby. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, happy birthday, DJ Screw. All right. Yes, uh, the one and only DJ Screw. You know what I'm saying? June 17th, June 7th, June 27th. You know what I'm saying? Going to be bumping hard and heavy tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know June 27th is, you might want to get up on your on your down south hip hop. Right? Uh, better believe it. You know what I'm saying? So, with that all being said, uh, I'm going to pick one a wild one. Right? I'm going to pick Houston at home. Ooh! Over, over the might be feeling themselves a little bit too much commanders. Right? So, I'm going to take Houston at home. So that one is a little bit is a little bit wild. I was not expecting that. Uh, I'm going the Commanders. You know, one thing as you know well, one thing Riverboat Ron can do is he can uh, he can put together some culture even if they don't always have the talent, right? Um, so I'm taking the Commanders. The Texans are 3 and one at home. Uh, so definitely not liking that with the injuries. Um, a little bit more definitely uh, Curtis Samuel, namely, uh, and Ar Armani Rogers there for um, the commanders. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be surprised, I guess, but um, I'm taking the commanders. But, you know, this this might be this might be one of them ones, JB, that gets you back into the Savage Picks race if you if you get this one right. I so, mean, you uh, know, there you go. You know, hey, I'm known for taking risks, baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Speaking of speaking of taking risk, and you got it right. It's a the rants the rants and stinking Raiders going up to the old the West the West the West the West Las Vegas Raiders going to the 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 Denver Ponies. I mean the Denver Broncos, and the line was two and a half, which is still. <laughs> which is still two and a half for the Broncos at home. <laughs> oh, God, man. Yeah. I got to go with the Broncos, bro. Like, the Raiders are a dumpster fire right now. I don't know. Cars behind center, which they'll never be good as long as he's there. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Devontae Adams, yeah. I'm sorry for a wasted season. Yeah. Just fucked up your Hall of Fame, you know what I'm saying, status. Uh, but with all being said and done, being at Denver, I think Denver was dead off week this week, right? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah, so it's past week. Yep. 
Time for them, you know what I'm saying, to clean up some mistakes. Time for them, to, you know what I'm saying, to really kind of get back to fundamentals. Time for them to see how can we make Russell Wilson get back to Russell Wilson form. That's going to be dangerous, right? Because we know what yeah. Russell Wilson do around this time of year. You know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. gets hot. And he gets hot fast. He gets hot and stays hot, right, until springtime comes around. That's when he cools off, right? Yes. So I think I think this is the game we're going to finally see Russ cooking as everybody been waiting to see. Right, Sierra been fucking riding that boy. You know what I'm saying? She been she put that O on him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Put them, good, boy, put them goodies on him. That boy, that thing moaning. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He gonna come out that thing throwing that bitch boy. It's gonna be fire behind that ball, boy. So yeah, oh, great as y'all, man. Look, man, look, man, look, man, man, look, man, look. Oof. So JB's taking the Broncos. I'm taking the Broncos as well. The Raiders are 0 and 5 on the road. They're 2 and 7. The you know to JB's point. You know, it's time for them to get cooking because they're three and six. So technically, they're in the mix in the AFC West because the Chargers are five and four. So if they get on a little run and the tar- Chargers, you know, start falling off like a bad bag of that dope, as JB says, they're dope. still in the mix. Yeah, technically, man. you know, and the Raiders are very undisciplined. Like you said, you're only probably going to be okay at best at this point with Derek Carr, and their season is pretty much over. It's technically a must win for them, but. At the end of the day, I think it's a bigger deal for the Broncos, and the Broncos are at home, so I'm taking them as well. All right, intriguing matchup, Dr. Bridges. Is the ah. thing about them Cowgirls and the Cowboys going against the, so bad. So bad right the Vikings, and the line is now, get this, uh, minus one and a half for Dallas on the road. Vegas, no I'm telling you, and I said this earlier in the season, there's going to come a time when everybody's success is going to take a hit, right? Word to American gangster, you know what I'm saying? There's going to come a time where everybody's success is going to take a hit. And the Viking success is about to take a hit, right? To the goddamn Ooh. Dallas Cowboys, to a team that they Ooh. faced a mini day, to a mini battle. I'm talking about from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? Cowboys will go into Minnesota and they will win this game. Dak Prescott will redeem himself after throwing two picks, you know what I'm saying, at Green Bay. Uh, and this is going to start, not the demise, but the humbling of the Vikings. Wow. Okay. I like this. I, I'm with you on the theory in normal times, but I don't know if I trust the Cowboys in a shootout and to make enough plays on defense. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Vikings, and I'm probably going to bet this one as well because that is a that is a cheeky as hell line. And our guy Mitch believes in it too. That's part of his money making pick of the week. He's taken the Eagles minus seven against the Colts, and he's taken the Vikings plus one and a half at home against the Cowboys in a parlay. And Mitch has moved to three and three on the year. JB, he, he got his pick la- right last week. Oh, the, the Chiefs- man. The Chiefs covered nine and a half and won 27 17 over the Jags. So there you go. Shot to Mitchell be back uh, next week. So I'm taking the Vikings. All right. It's the Chiefs Kingdom headed to the LA Barstow, San Diego, San Antonio, Bakersfield. Goddamn Chargers. And the line was seven, and the line is now uh, five and a half for the Chiefs on the road. Yeah, give me the five and a half. Give me the Chiefs. You know what I'm saying? The Chargers are whack, son. You know what I'm saying? I just I don't know how to say it. They're wiggity, 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 whack. Like, for real. Oh, man. Uh, the Chiefs, you know what I'm saying? Chiefs going to chief, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Andy Reid led team. They're, they're going to be prepared, right? Their defense is starting to pick up steam. Game momentum against the Chargers offense that's struggling. Please, give me Kansas City. Give me the five points. I don't give it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I think this is where the Chiefs or the pardon me the, the Chargers start to fall off a little bit, and this is where you may see the 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 Chiefs um, solidify you know their crown at, at the top of the AFC West, and you know other teams like the Broncos maybe rise up when when the Chargers start to fall off. So I'm taking the Chiefs to come out here on the West Coast and get it done as well. And I should be corrected; that is the Sunday Night Football game. Uh, so there you go. Speaking of it out at the right time, JB, it's an AFC North matchup. The Bungles going against the old Steelers, and the line was four and a half, and has moved down to three and a half for Cincy on the road. Be leery of the sweep, all right? Get your brum out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Get your brum out, because I don't see the Steelers beating these boys no kind of way, no shape, form, or fashion. All right, I think Cincinnati, Burrow and the boys, you know what I'm saying, going to go down there and who they, you know what I'm saying, 
handle that business. You dig? So I got the Bengals. Yeah, I got I got the Bengals just too much for him on offense, especially now that Joe Mixon is going. So they're establishing that run game. And listen, if you're going to count on Kenny Pickett, who will, you'll get better slowly but surely to compete in a uh, in a shootout with old Joe Shiesty and them boys, I am not banking on it. So I'm taking the Steelers as well. And finally, it's a Niner Gang. The Niner Gang. Headed to the big toaster, and this is it. It's Monday Night Football heading against the BG, and the line was 7.5 for the Niners, and now it's moved up to 8 for the Niners on the road in the desert. JB, make your case for the BG and why they'll get it done, my friend. I ain't making no damn case, all right? We're a better football team, <laughs> right? All, all we need, all we need is for our coach to call plays that are favorable for our offense to succeed and to maintain the ball. That's all I need, right? And here's the thing about this. If Colt's going to start this week, which I'm pretty sure he is, we ain't got to worry about him throwing the ball down the field trying to get the big play every time, right? He's going to run that offense straight. He's going to run it smart. He's going to run when he needs to. Our offensive line is going to be comfortable because we're going to lean on that run. Connor's healthy, right? We got, uh, what's the other cast name? Williams, you know what I'm saying? He's healthy, right? Hey, hey, hop in this thing, more in this thing. You know what I mean? AJ Green, who Colt McCoy likes to throw the ball to, by the way, right? Who still got juice, by the way, in this thing. Defense, been to get with him, though. Christian McCaffrey, you just a cog in the machine, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're not even special anymore. You know what I'm saying? Just be honest, no right? Another motherfucking piece in a machine at this point. We ain't worried about him, right? We ain't worried about you, shit. We are worried about Skittles, you know what I'm saying? Because he, if he starts to have a good day, then that's just a bad day, <laughs> him, right? But, yes. Yeah. BG? That bird. You seen it? That bird. Man, this is tough. It's a, mu- it's a, it's a must win game for the BG. They're one and four at home. <sighs> Got I'm taking the Niners. I know it sucks. I'm taking the Niners. Just, just too much for them. My dog. We'll see. We'll see what's happening. We'll see what's happening out there. The big toaster. All right. We'll see who's right, who's wrong, who's both right, who's both wrong. The Dolphins, the Squawks, the Bucks, and the Jags all have this week off. And JB, you know what time it is. Time to take us home with a little bit of "We Need Us," my friend. Talk to the people. Uh, stop shooting up shit, please. Like for real. We've had on the cool, on the cool. We've had eight mass shootings in the last damn near four days, right? And we've had one attempt, if you guys didn't see the one that tried to happen in Buffalo. This guy went to a building, just grown a worker. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Went yep. to a building and tried to dump this. And a couple of brave men, right? You know what I'm saying? Shut this cat down. Um, stop being pussies, right? And I understand that's a that's society nowadays. But stop being pussy, right? Stop being pussy. Like, learn to understand process and deal with your emotions and learn to deal with yourself internally not everybody got mental issues and stop fucking blaming that shit on people that pull guns and shoot a bunch of people because they feel in some type of way that's a cop out and it's fucked up for the people that really do have mental issues right so stop being fucking pussies right as a matter of fact and work to have to be put the glocks down Right, all glocks down. Come let's on, start now. Throwing, let's start throwing these fucking hands again. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Let's take it back to the early '70s. You know what I'm saying? Let's take it back to the late '60s, early '70s. You know what I'm saying? When gangs first, quote unquote, came about, right? Before they start putting guns in my black people, in my Hispanic people, in my hood white people's hands, right? Let's let's go back to throwing these hands when we got problems, right? Because in the words of Pops Williams, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? From the first Friday, you live. You live to fight another day, right? Now, I know they don't want to hear that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because they want you to die. They want you to die because if they die, if you die, that's less money. They got a fund for your hood. That's less money. They got a fund for your grandma. You know what I'm saying? They, they want us to die. Everything they do in this earth, they're doing it for us to die, right? The air we breathe at this point, right? It's the reason why everybody got allergy problems right now. It's not a coincidence, right? I ain't never had allergy problems since I got rid of VLA. You ask many, right? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like... It just is what it is. But when it's all said and done, you know what I'm saying? We need us. Again, this is more powerful than this, right? 
is what it is. All right, man. We appreciate you guys watching, listening. Yeah. Episode 238, man. Follow us on social media, all our social media platforms at JB and Benny Blue. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to our YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe, five star, Please. all that good shit. Tell your friends Please. about us, man. We got a really good podcast and had a really great podcast for a long time. Uh, we yes. do live stream, you know what I'm saying? Wednesdays at 6 30 Pacific Standard Time, 7 30 Mountain Standard Time, and 9 30 Eastern Standard Time. Check us out, man. Of course, you know, we're going to do a better job of pumping this shit on social media, right? Uh, we've done a good, uh, great thing, you know what I'm saying? As far as our production value, we're picking everything up. You know what I'm saying? Our podcast is growing. You can follow us on our personal Instagrams. All right, at 73 King JB73. And of course, at Benny Blue Eyes, like it's always been and always will be, right? Mm -hmm. uh, TikTok. Same thing at JB and Mini Blue. Get at us, you know, yeah. see that thing out there. If you're in the desert, right, you want to hear our melodious voices, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Casualsports.com, uh, live streaming constantly right here in the valley. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Sun, shout out to the Cardinals, you know what I'm saying? Shout out yes, to the Yotes. To the Yotes, you know what I'm saying? Even though I don't really follow hockey like that, I got to play my set. You still want to hear our melodious voices. Do you? Do you? I know you do. One hot dollar, man. One hot dollar, and I always go back to OnlyFans because all y'all boys out there front, you know what I'm saying? The average OnlyFans page is about fifteen dollars, so you're gonna save fourteen bucks here. Right. Some content that's gonna give you some game, you know what I'm saying? Might give you some betting advice, right? It's damn make that money. It's an investment, damn it. Damn sure gonna make you laugh. One dollar, man, it's gonna do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Patreon.com/slash JB and Benny Blue, and you can get our podcast in podcast form. Sponsorship, right. interviews, new music, hate mail. JB and Benny Blue review at gmail.com. Get with us. You think we don't do it? Check past episodes. We do play live music on here and we give you reviews and reactions right here in real time. Right? Episode 238, man. We out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, tap in with our boys, Valley Boys Association. Of course, we like Zach and Cody. You know what I'm saying? Get with them. Uh, we do have our promo for that, man. Um, Tim to buy, all that, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, everything we pop up there, you know what I'm saying? Holler that boy. You know what I mean? Episode 238, bro. You know what I'm saying? We just did it again. Thanks. Listen, enjoy your weekend of football. Please. If y'all are watching college football, y'all crazy right now. Man, some great ball coming up. This oh week, next God. week, great, great weekend. It's coming statement up. weekend in college football. We got yes. some real games that matter for real, for real. Right now, college football, man. Watch college. Sit down on Saturdays and watch college football, man. You will be in heaven football fan oh, yeah. it's crazy Definitely. right now it's like old Definitely. school football it's cool you know all these big names are back Tennessee yeah. Georgia's you know what I'm saying Notre Dame's even started gaining momentum you know what I'm saying we got those teams that are making hay we got those teams that are mm -hmm. upsetting teams that you ain't heard about like who are these cats that's that's raising hell yep it's beautiful to watch TCU Exciting. TCU is in the top fucking four crazy yep and, and they're worthy yeah, no worries. So, hey man, get with him, man. Episode two day eight, man. Uh, yes. JB and Benny Blue. This is my brother Benny Blue. I'm JB. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we out. Till next week. Enjoy the weekend of football, college, NFL. You know we love you. Know what you're talking about next week. That's right. So until then, we will see you, and we are out. Peace. Holla.